I'm Roger Sutton from The Horn Book, and I'm here with Tracy Baptiste talking about her second book, Rise of the Jumbies, Hi. sequel to The Jumbies. And I got to tell you, Tracy, that when I opened it, and I read, I read this one first and this one, um, I thought, Jumbies, that sounds like, they sound so jolly. <laughs> <laughs> no. They are not jolly. They are not jolly. It's true. So they are these mythological creatures from Caribbean folklore, and they will eat you. Given half really? a chance to eat you, they will eat you. And I grew up listening to these stories. My mom would tell me these stories at night. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Before I went to bed. Did you grow up in New Jersey? I grew up in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh -huh. And so my mom would tell me these stories. And people in Trinidad talk about jumbies as if they could be anybody. Like it could be you. And I don't know because you don't really you don't turn know, into a jumbie until at night. So. Could be. Could be. Uh -huh. Yes. And so you have to know how to keep yourself safe from jumbies when you're a kid. And one of the ways, of course, is you stay inside at night and you listen to your mom and dad. It's more, it's like child control, uh -huh. really, is the whole thing. But there's like all kinds of different ways that you keep yourself safe from various types of jumbies. Right, because there's a whole there, bunch of different ones. It's not one thing. No, like, there's a whole bunch of right. different ones. Um, the Dwens are the scariest ones. They're like toddler sized, super cute, but they only have a mouth and their feet are on backwards. You know, that was the scariest detail. They are. <laughs> Yes, they are hands down the most frightening of them all. And they come outside your house at night and then you wait for your mom or dad to call your name. They learn how to say it exactly, mimic it exactly, call you. And then of course, when you go outside, <laughs> yummy. Right, yummy child. But you know, one thing that you do in here that I think is really effective is that you do have this basic scariness of the jumbies. And Corinne, the, yes, the girl Corinne. is dealing with all these jumbies. But at the same time, you get this mythological level to these creatures, particularly to those two main lady jumbies. Yes, uh-huh. That in the first book, who, I, in Severine. the movie, yeah. you know, I keep seeing her as Cookie Lion. Oh, Cookie Lion. Don't you think? Who oh. should play her in the movie? Oh, my gosh. Actually, that is a good choice. I love Taraji P. Henson uh -huh. so much. So, yes, she would be wonderful. For, in the second book, for the second Jumbie, the Ocean Jumbie, yes, I was low. thinking Angelina Jolie. Oh, really? Uh, I was actually, just, you know, I think like somebody who, oh my gosh, I can't remember her name right now, but she sings, um, she's like this beautiful voice. Because anytime I think about mermaids, because Mama Jolie's a water mm -hmm. Jumbie, she's a mermaid, except that she has an anaconda's tail. Right. Um, I always think about them singing. You know, so I always think about, you know, people who have, like, beautiful singing voices. I don't know if Angelina, does Angelina Jolie sing? She doesn't sing. Not that we've heard, uh, no. so. <laughs> no, no. We could dub her. It's all right. You can do it. That's all right. I can do I can't sing. <laughs> Nobody wants me to sing. <laughs> Was it hard because you, in the second book, introduce a theme of the escape, the slaves who had jumped from the ships? Right. Um, that Mama, how do you say her name? Mama Jalo. Mama Jalo sort of taking them in as her children. Mm -hmm. Which to me seems like a very sort of literarily risky thing to do. Like, here I'm writing this fun story about spooks and ghosts and jumbies and they're slaves. Right. So, so I actually introduced slaves or the idea that slaves came on ships in the first one. And Severine mentions it very, very briefly mm -hmm. in, as she's talking about how people came to the island and pushed the Jumbies out because the, the Jumbies are indigenous creatures right. to the islands. Right, they're and nature they get, spirits in right. a way. And then they get pushed out when people come. And she, so she mentions how these people came on these ships and they were chained in the bottom of ships. But I only touched on it very tiny, tiny bit because I was very nervous mm -hmm. about <laughs> including this at all. And I got no pushback from it. Nobody said anything about it. Nobody seemed to have a problem with it. And so for the second one, I just dug in. Uh -huh. And I wanted to play with this idea of people who are taken from a place, forcibly taken from a place, brought to another place, and their, their connection is severed completely. They don't remember anything about who they were before. And so when I started Rise of the Jumbies, I had this very strong idea that I wanted the mermaids to have come from Africa, but they have no idea 
-hmm. who they are, where they have come from. They have no connection to their culture, to their heritage. And then as they go back across the ocean, it all starts flooding, literally flooding. Right, literally. Back. Yeah, yeah. And so that was really the idea that was driving the second book, mm -hmm. where I wanted to have that. And then, you know, all of the, the, the idea about the transatlantic slave tra you know, trade and then Mama Jolo rescuing them. I feel like them. you dealt with it respectfully, too. Yeah, I mean, it gives I was, a real I was nervous. To the story. <laughs> you know, for, I, for sure I was nervous about including it. But Elise Howard, my editor, she was very supportive about doing it. There was a passage in it that we initially took out entirely that was a little bit more grisly. Mm -hmm. And uh, just before it went to galleys, I said, I think we need to put it back in. Mm. And she said, sure. And so it's in there. And, you know, you get the full feeling of, yes, these people were taken, yes, this horrible thing happened, but yes, we are these beautiful creatures now. And I think that it also enhances the realism of the book, that to me these almost feel more like magic realism than like fantasy. Right, yes, so. I have heard that, that it's more like magical realism, but I'm also Caribbean, so I feel like, so you, do you know, believe it's in them? more, do, if I believe in jumbies. jumbies, do you think they exist? Well, I, I mean, I do and you don't I don't. You want to say no, do you? <laughs> I, do, I do and I don't, only because everybody talks about them like they're real. And I will not discount anything. If somebody comes to the house at night, I, or I hear my name called at night, I will still say, did someone call me, rather than answering. Because answering a jumpy is how you get eaten. And so I will not just... Crazy. Exactly. Exactly. Crazy. Yeah, I'm not going out. I will ask the question because jumbies don't know how to answer that question. Mm -hmm. They only know how to say your name. So I'm very cautious. So I'm not going to say they don't exist, but I'm making sure that I don't get eaten. Maybe you'll find out, Tracy. <laughs> it's very nice talking to you. Thank you very Thank much, you very Roger. Much. Thanks for having me.